welcome to this video. Today I will show you how to paint these single toned misty hills in watercolor. To begin I have my cold pressed paper taped down to my board and I am just going to lightly sketch some hills and trees. All of the supplies and materials will be listed in the description below. Just a quick side note, all of the colors I am using are from Daniel Smith's introductory watercolor set. This includes a warm and cool version of each of the primary colors. I highly recommend this set if you are just getting started with watercolor painting because it will allow you to create a really broad range of hues without having to buy lots of tubes of colors which you may or may not need when you're just starting to learn. The link to this set is also in the description. And if you want to learn more about how to get started using and mixing these colors to create bright and neutral tones, and you'd like to watch a real-time tutorial that incorporates multiple traditional and experimental watercolor techniques, I invite you to enroll in my free beginner's course, Watercolor Painting with Confidence. And that link is also in the video description. Now I am mixing the hue I want to use for this painting. I want to make a moody, misty purple color. So to begin, I am mixing cool phthalo blue and quinacridone rose, which is a cool red, to get a vibrant purple and to neutralize it just a little bit, I'm adding some warm red, which is the pyrrole orange, as well as a little bit of warm French ultramarine. Since the ultramarine is a granulating color, it will help add some interesting texture. I'm going to be painting this wet and wet in stages. I'm adding pure water to the sky and only brushing it on to the top of the first hill. Once it's all wet, I'm adding a strong value, meaning less water, to the very top and I add some lighter value to the bottom. It doesn't need to be a perfectly graded wash since a little bit of playing with it like I'm doing here with the brush will help it look like storm clouds. Let this layer completely dry and then do the same thing to the first hill, adding just plain water to paint it wet and wet. The only difference is you will leave about a quarter inch from the top of the hill dry. Painting the very top wet on dry allows you to keep the top of the hill very dark. Try to keep the base of the hill fairly light. It will look like there is mist rising up and it will add a good contrast to the top of the hill in front of it. If you enjoy this video, please show your support by subscribing to my channel, hit the notification bell, and give this video a thumbs up. While the paint is still wet, dip a detailed brush into your paint mix and fill in the trees. If the paint gets too dry, you will have hard lines and the effect won't look as natural. Another reason I chose cold pressed paper for this project is that it stays wet for a good amount of time, which actually makes it easier to achieve these effects. If you've worked with watercolors before, then you know that unlike other media, you have to learn and practice with not just the paint, but how it and the water work together and how they react on the paper you choose. There are multiple variables to consider, in other words. If you choose to try this on hot press paper, you could end up with quite a different look. Not better or worse, it just depends on what you are aiming for in the final result. Hot press paper would make it a little more difficult to make the trees look like an extension of the wash compared to the cold press, at least for a beginner in my opinion. If you'd like to see another video where I paint the same subject on cold press and hot press paper side by side for you to see the difference, 
please leave me a comment below to let me know that this would be something you are interested in. Doing the next two hills are pretty much a repeat of the first one, only the trees just get a little bigger as they get closer. And just as a reminder, work on just one hill and tree section at a time and wait for it to dry completely before moving on. You could even try this with different colors. An orange color would look really nice, for example, and would totally change the mood of the piece. Whatever hue you decide upon to use, make sure you mix plenty of it because if you run out, it won't be easy to remix it exactly. It can take practice to know how much to mix up, but if you generally want to follow along and paint something this size, about 8.5 inches or so, you can see how much I am mixing for it. I used to always underestimate when I was starting out, and it took a while before I could get used to how much would be needed. And it also depends on how watery your application would be, so it does take some practice to get an idea for it. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I encourage you to practice these techniques because the more you do it, the more confident you will become. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel to see more art videos. Also, leave a comment about other art tutorial videos you would like to see. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you next time.